Hello and welcome back to the Yours in Old Fomoco Iron YouTube channel. My name is Adrian Clements and in video number 12 we're going to do a deep dive on a unique one of one 1967 Ford Country Squire dual facing rear seats or DFRS four door station wagon with vehicle identification number or VIN 7U74Q143183. What makes this patinaed old Ford wagon so special, you ask? Well, a few things. First of all, the fact that it is the only factory four-speed Country Squire station wagon built for the 1967 model year. Not only that, but powering this car is a factory Q-code 428 cubic inch Thunderbird 7 liter V8, 345 horsepower engine and the car was factory built with XL type bucket seats and console. I was fortunate enough to own this car from early September 2001 through mid-October 2016 and had a lot of fun with the old girl over the years. Now it's time for the story of 7U74Q143183. Let's get started. The 1967 Ford full-size lineup, which included the Custom, Custom 500, Galaxy 500, XL, LTD, Ranch Wagon, Country Sedan, and Country Squire series, was introduced to the public on Friday, September 30th, 1966. This photo of a 1967 Ford Galaxy 500 four-door sedan, top, and Country Squire DFRS four-door station wagon, bottom, were part of the 1967 Ford Press Information Kit. The verbiage that accompanies this photo states, the Country Squire wagon retains the popular two-way tailgate as standard equipment. Ford also referred to the two-way tailgate as the magic door gate. This is section A, page 11 of the 1967 Ford Carfax book, which provides details about the Country Squire four-door station wagon, body serial code 73 and body code 71E, and the Country Squire DFRS four-door station wagon, body serial code 74 and body code 71A. The small photo in the bottom right corner shows the full width front bench seat that was standard equipment on the Country Squire station wagons. Fast forward a couple of months to late 1966. 33-year-old Vincent Bowling Jr. of Dayton, Ohio is married with three children and is the president of Airco Coles Incorporated, a company founded by his late father, Vincent Bowling Sr. Vince Jr. had friends who owned sports cars and sometimes he would tag along with them to places like Watkins Glen in New York State and drive his friends' cars on the track, where he especially enjoyed the feeling of shifting the car's manual transmission while tearing around the track. The five-member bowling family needed a station wagon to move them around town and take them on vacation. But Vince wanted something a little more exciting than a big station wagon with an automatic transmission. With some ideas in mind, he headed to his local Ford dealer, CJ Stevie Inc., doing business as Stevie Ford, located at 811 South Main Street in Miamisburg, Ohio, just south of Dayton. This is the building that Google Maps shows located at that address as of August 2023. I assume that this is the old Stevie Ford dealership building with the former showroom on the right. Vince told the salesman what he wanted for his new family hauler. Number one, a 1967 Ford Country Squire DFRS four-door station wagon, body serial code 74 and body code 71A. Number two, Sautern Gold Paint, Color code Z, a medium gold green metallic color. Number three, a pastel parchment all vinyl interior, but with XL type bucket seats and a console in place of the standard full width front bench seat. Trim code 6U for the pastel parchment bench seat interior. Number four, a 428 cubic inch Thunderbird 7 liter V8 engine that produced 345 horsepower at 4,600 RPM, 462 pound force feet of torque at 2,800 RPM with a 10.5 to one compression ratio, denoted by a Q in the fifth position of the VIN. Number five, a top loader four speed manual console shift transmission, transcode five. The dealership told Vince that the engine and paint color weren't a problem as they were both RPOs, regular production options, 
available on all 1967 Ford full-size cars. Additionally, the bucket seats and console, though not an RPO on the 67 Ford station wagons, could be factory installed as special order items. However, the four-speed manual transmission was a deal breaker as the 1967 Ford full-size car literature clearly states four-speed manual transmission not available on station wagon models. Vince was adamant that he would only accept a four-speed Country Squire, and it had to be factory-built, not a post-production dealership conversion. Understandably, the dealership wanted to sell Vince the car, as his company, Erco Coles, was a fleet buyer from Ford, meaning they purchased at least five Fomoco vehicles annually. But the dealership personnel insisted that if they submitted the order as specified by Vince to the district sales office, it would be kicked back as unbuildable due to the requested four-speed manual transmission. Finally, in frustration, the salesman jotted down a name and address on a piece of paper, handed it to Vince, and said, write to this person at Ford Motor Company. If he says it's okay, then they'll build it. So Vince did just that. He wrote a letter and explained his situation and requested that Ford build the car he so very much wanted. A couple of weeks later, Vince received a letter from the gentleman at Ford stating that his car would in fact be built. But who was this Ford employee that granted his wish? None other than Lee Iacocca, Mr. Mustang, who was vice president of Ford's car and truck group at the time. This recount of events was told to me by Vince himself in August 2001, and he was still appreciative of Mr. Iacocca's help and authority in getting his wagon built more than 30 years after the fact. Vince's order for his wagon was placed on Friday, January 6, 1967, which resulted in the generation of this special order form the next day, Saturday, January 7, 1967. There's a lot of information filled out on the special order form and it's a little hard to make out, so let's concentrate on the following. DSO number, FSO number, which is domestic special order number and foreign special order number, 270073. This is the car's domestic special order number where 27 stands for the district sales office in Cincinnati, Ohio, and 0073 is the special order number. Dealer, CJ Stevie Incorporated. Customer, Airco Coles and fleet account, yes. Engine, 428-4V Q engine. Paint color, Z. Body style, DFRS Country Squire. Trim, 6U, a pastel parchment all vinyl bench seat interior. Main and auxiliary transmission, manufacturer's model number, four speed, standard shift, rear axle capacity, model, and ratio, standard 3.25 ratio. Other optional equipment, visibility group, standard luggage rack, power side windows, power steering, select air, which is Ford speak for air conditioning, AM FM radio, rear speakers, tinted glass, deluxe seat belts. Description one, four speed transmission. Description two, 428 four V engine, price over 289 two V engine. Description three, bucket seats, XL type, driver and passenger, for use with parchment vinyl trim, eight U. Description four, XL console, parchment trim, console, and then something illegible, manual trans. Description five, carpets, front and rear floor for use with parchment trim, code 1U. Remarks, dealer to inform customer that bucket seat style does not match back seat style. This remark is interesting because the bucket seat covers do match the rear seat covers. The car's VIN of 7U74Q143183 was generated just under three weeks later on Thursday, January 26th, 1967. 
The car was scheduled to be produced on Tuesday, February 14, 1967, which is Valentine's Day, but was actually produced 13 days late on Monday, February 27, 1967. This reproduction window sticker from Marty Auto Works shows that 7U74Q143183 had an MSRP, including transportation charges, of $4,915.33, an increase of 46.3% over the base price of $3,359.06. That $4,915 MSRP was a significant amount of money back in the day. It's equivalent to $45,300 today versus a base price of $30,950 today. 7U74Q143183 was sold by Stevie Ford to Vince and his family on Thursday, March 9th, 1967. The car was allegedly used in a Kentucky Fried Chicken TV commercial around 1969, but I've never been able to find it. The Bowling family enjoyed the car for almost exactly a decade, as this title for the car, when owned by the second owner, James, or Jim Lewis, was issued on March 3, 1977. Jim and his family drove 7U74Q143183 from 1977 through 1988, the last year that the car was licensed according to the series of license plate renewal stamps on the title. According to one of Jim's children, they called the car Four Speed Henry. This photo of 7U74Q143183 was taken at a Super 60s Ford Club car show in Independence, Ohio on Sunday, June 28, 1981, when the car was 14 years old. She looks pretty good. Please note that the car was not built with the styled steel wheel covers it's wearing in this photo. Notice that the Ohio GRN108 license plate on the front of the car in 1981 is shown on the title as still being the license plate number in July 1985. In mid-August 2001, I received an email from a friend of mine about a 1967 Ford Country Squire four-door station wagon with bucket seats for sale in Ohio. My friend had received an email from a mutual friend of ours who had a friend that had met somebody at the huge annual car show in Iola, Wisconsin in July 2001 that knew the seller, Jim Lewis of Yellow Springs, Ohio. Wanting only to add this car to the 1967 Ford full-size registry, which I had founded a little over two years earlier on April 1st, 1999, I called Jim to find out more about this unusual car. Jim and I chatted about his wagon, and when he was telling me about it, he stated that it had a 428 engine, air conditioning, power windows, front bucket seats with console, and oh yeah, it was a four-speed. I told him it couldn't be a factory four-speed, as the literature clearly stated that the top-loader four-speed manual transmission was not available in the 67 Ford full-size wagons. Jim insisted it was a factory install. I asked him if he could read me the VIN and production data, the body, color, trim, date, DSO, axle, and trans codes from the door data plate. He replied that yes, the car was outside in his driveway and that he would go and write it all down and that I should call him back in about 15 minutes. I waited what seemed the longest 15 minutes of my life. And when I called back, Jim started with the production data as follows. Body 71A equals body style code. Ford Country Squire DFRS four-door station wagon with 48,115 produced during the 1967 model year. Note, over the years, you may have seen a production figure of 44,024 Ford Country Squire DFRS four-door station wagons built during the 1967 model year. But amazingly enough, Ford neglected to include the units built at the Oakville assembly plant located in Oakville, Ontario, Canada in this total. The actual number produced is therefore 48,115. Color Z is the exterior paint color, which is Sauterne Gold, a medium gold green metallic color. Trim 6U, which is the interior trim color and material and front seat style. Uh, pastel parchment crinkle grain vinyl cushions and bolsters bench seat. Date 14B, which is the scheduled build date, is Tuesday, February 14th, 1967. 
DSO 270073 is the domestic special order number. The car was ordered through a dealership in the Cincinnati, Ohio sales district as deno denoted by the 27. That covered Southern Ohio, Southern West Virginia, Eastern Kentucky, and Southeastern Indiana. This car was built under special order number 0073. Note that the DSO of 270073 on the door data plate matches the handwritten DSO of 270073 on the special order form previously discussed. Axle 6 is the rear axle ratio type and ring gear diameter. It's a 2.80 to 1 non-locking 9 and 3 8 inch diameter ring gear. Note, even though the special order form stipulated that this car receive a 3.25 to 1 non-locking rear axle, which was the standard rear axle ratio with a 428 four-speed powertrain in non-station wagon 67 Ford full-size cars, this car was built with a 2.80 to 1 non-locking rear axle, which was the standard rear axle ratio with a 428 automatic powertrain in all 67 Ford full-size cars. So I'm not sure what happened there. Trans 5 is the transmission type and shift location. Uh, it's a top loader four-speed manual console shift. I couldn't believe it. An honest to goodness four-speed country squire. Next, Jim read me the VIN of 7U74Q143183, which decodes as follows. 7 is the model year for 1967. U is the build plant for the Louisville assembly plant in Louisville, Kentucky. 74 is the body serial code, which is a Ford Country Squire DFRS four-door station wagon with 48,115 produced during the 1967 model year. Q is the engine, which is a 428 cubic inch Thunderbird 7 liter V8. Uh, it's a 428 with a four barrel carburetor, 345 horsepower at 4,600 RPM, 462 pound force feet of torque at 2,800 RPM with a 10.5 to one compression ratio. And finally, 143183 is the consecutive unit number or CUN, uh, which means it was the 43,183rd Ford car scheduled to be built at the Louisville assembly plant during the 1967 model year. And just to note that job one was CUN 100001. The car's cowl VIN stamping shows 7U74Q143183, the same as the VIN on the door data plate. I made arrangements with Jim to go and see the car in a couple of weeks in late August 2001. I hung up with Jim and called Marty Auto Works to speak with Kevin Marty about 7U74Q143183. Kevin, I said, I've got a hot one for you to run. It's a 1967 Ford Country Squire DFRS four-door station wagon with a 428 engine and a four-speed manual transmission. Kevin said, it can't be. You couldn't get a four-speed in a wagon. I said, well, that may be, but the owner read me the VIN and production data from the car's door data plate, and it has a trans code of five for a four-speed and a six-digit DSO indicating it was a special order car. Kevin ran the VIN in his Fomoco production database and was surprised to find out that it was built as a four-speed, and it was the only one built like it to boot. The Deluxe Marty Report for 7U74Q143183 matches the car perfectly. The production data matches the door tag, the selling dealership is correct, and the list of options is exactly what's on the car. The blue statistics box on the Deluxe Marty Report confirms that this car is the only 1967 Ford Country Squire DFRS four-door station wagon built with a 428 four-barrel four-speed powertrain. It's actually even simpler than that. This car is the only 1967 Ford Country Squire DFRS four-door station wagon built with a four-speed manual transmission, regardless of the engine. The white statistics box on the Elite Marty Report breaks it down further, as 7U74Q143183 is the only 1967 station wagon built with a 428 four-barrel four-speed powertrain by all of Ford Motor Company. On Thursday, August 30th, 2001, I made the almost four-hour drive from my home in Wixom, Michigan, northwest of Detroit, to Jim's home in Yellow Springs, Ohio, just east of Dayton, 
to inspect 7U74Q143183. These are some of the photos I took that day showing what the car looked like after not being licensed for 13 years and after being stored outside for an unknown period of time. The astute viewer will notice the incorrect white ball Hearst shifter in the car at the time, the only deviation from factory on the entire car. Jim said that about 20 people had inquired about the car so far, but all of them wanted to pull the 428 and four speed out of the wagon and put it in something else like a Mustang. Jim didn't want that to happen and neither did I. Jim was asking $3,000 for the car as it sat, but I managed to purchase it for $2,800. Notice that the Ohio 793 FXM license plate on the, on the front of the car in 2001 is shown on the title as the license plate number starting in July 1986. Just over a week later, on Sunday, September 9th, 2001, I returned to Jim's home in Yellow Springs, Ohio, as a passenger in a tow truck to retrieve 7U74Q143183 and bring it home to Wixom, Michigan. That was a really good day. I'm in the dark blue shirt and ball cap while Jim Lewis is in the teal shirt. I skipped work on Monday, September 10th, 2001, and actually got the car running that same day after a very little bit of maintenance and using a temporary plastic jug of gas in the engine compartment as the fuel source. I scrubbed the entire exterior of the car, which thankfully removed the built-up dirt, grime, and mildew. I performed a bunch of mechanical work on 7U74Q143183 between March 2002 and May 2003. The heater core had split and needed to be replaced, which is not much fun on a 67 Ford full-size car with air conditioning. If you know, you know. I also sourced and installed the correct black ball Ford shifter to replace the incorrect Hurst unit. The tailgate window electric motor was replaced with an NOS one, new old stock and lots of other items on the car needed attention. The car ran okay, but the engine was obviously tired. So I nursed it along and drove it for a couple of years before pulling the engine and transmission in the summer of 2003 for full professional rebuilds. The car ran much better after that, but with that 2.80 to one non-locking rear end, she wasn't much of a neck snapper off the line. From 2002 to 2013, I took 7U74Q143183 to at least 30 car shows in the USA and Canada, including the Ford Motor Company Centennial, Ford Motor Company of Canada Limited Centennial, the Carlisle All Ford Nationals, the Woodward Dream Cruise, the Ford Galaxy Club of America Galaxy Nationals, the Telegraph Cruise, the Ford and Mercury Restores Club Dearborn Show, the Shelby American Automobile Club Motor City Region Show and Go, Baker's Cruise Inn, the Ford Product Development Center Employee Truck and Car Show, the Brighton Auto Fest, Heinz Park Ford All Ford Classic Car Show, Mustang Memories, a bunch of Motor City Galaxy Club Galaxy Gatherings, and the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. The car was always very well received. People would walk up muttering stuff like, why is this rusty wagon here? Immediately followed by, holy crap, it's a four-speed with buckets. These walk-around tour photos of 7U74Q143183 were taken on Wednesday, May 16th, 2012 and show the exterior, interior, and engine compartment of the car. The white writing on the long quarter windows that reads... Factory 428 four-speed, one of one, were on the car for years and would often generate puzzled looks from passing cars when driving on the highway. Despite the warning on the special order form, you can see that the seat cover style of the front bucket seats does indeed match perfectly with the seat cover style of the bench seat behind it. With the 2.80 to 1 non-locking rear axle, 7U74Q143183 really was a great highway cruiser with nice long legs, which helped make up for the relatively slow start from a dead stop with that rear end. Knowing that another of my 1967 Fords with a 428 four-barrel four-speed powertrain and the same size tires turned 3,000 RPM at 70 miles an hour in fourth gear, with a 3.25 to one rear axle. Calculations reveal that 7U74Q143183 with the 2.80 to one non-locking rear axle would be running 
124.6 miles an hour in fourth gear at 4,600 RPM, where the 428 developed its maximum horsepower rating. For the record, I never tested this theory. 7U74Q143183 was featured in Jerry Heasley's Rare Finds column in the July 2002 issue of Mustang and Ford's magazine. Jerry did a great job in the article, other than listing white ball instead of black ball in the penultimate paragraph when discussing the factory correct shifter I was looking for for the car. Amazingly, for years after this article was published, people would come up to the car at shows and say, hey, I remember this thing from Rare Finds. Bob Stevens wrote a little blurb about the car in the November 2002 issue of Cars and Parts magazine that covered the car's attendance at the Ford and Mercury Restorers Club of America Dearborn 2002 Car Show, Car Corral, and Swap Meet held at the Wayne County Fairgrounds in Belleville, Michigan in July 2002. Notice how the VIN shown on the Ohio title that was issued to Jim Lewis after he purchased the car from Vince Bowling on March 3, 1977 has an erroneous C in the fifth position of the VIN that would indicate a 289 two-barrel 200 horsepower V8 engine instead of the correct Q for the 428 four-barrel 345 horsepower V8 engine the car was built with. Thankfully, I was able to easily get the VIN error corrected on the new Michigan title after I purchased the car from Jim in September 2001. 7U74Q143183's gas tank was in terrible condition when I bought the car from Jim. The car had been stored outside with no gas cap for an unknown number of years, so the tank was half full of a nasty mixture of very old gas, water, rust, sludge, etc. Rust holes opened up in the tank when I was cleaning the exterior after having drained it and removed it from the car. I took the gas tank to my radiator guy to have him repair the rust holes and line the tank, which he did. Unfortunately, the lining began to delaminate from the inside of the tank, and both of the underhood fuel filters began to clog with bits and pieces from the failed gas tank lining. So the tank came out again, and this time went to Gas Tank Renew for a full professional refurbishment. That resolved the issue with the plugging fuel filters, and the car ran as it should. However, an on and off fuel supply issue started to show up a few years later. In what seemed to be random occurrences, the car would start to stumble and miss when the fuel demand was high, such as when running 70 miles an hour on the highway or under spirited acceleration. The problem would pop up from time to time and persisted for years, and it really detracted from the car's drivability. Finally, I made the observation that the fuel supply issue never happened when the tank was above about half full which made me think that the problem could be related to reduced head pressure at the gas tank sending unit pickup. When I removed the sending unit, I found that the cylindrical filter on the end of the pickup tube was indeed partially plugged. I removed the old filter and the problem was solved. Woohoo! This is a 20 second video of me running the car through the gears from a stoplight shortly after removing the clogged pickup tube filter. The thumbs up I give at the end of the video was genuine satisfaction and relief that at long last the fuel supply issue had been resolved. This 5 minute and 52 second walk around tour video was filmed on Sunday, June 12th, 2016. In it, you can hear the car running in the background while I move around the car talking about it. Hello, we're going to do a video tour of my 1967 Ford Country Squire dual four-door, dual-facing rear seat station wagon. A very unusual car because it is a factory 428 four-speed. Uh, the four-speed was not a regular option in the station wagons, any of the station wagons. We had ranch wagon, country sedan, or country squire. Um, <clears throat> but this car was factory built with a four-speed manual transmission. 
it is documented by Ford Motor Company as the only 1967 Country Squire station wagon with dual facing rear seats that had a four-speed manual transmission. And the fact that it has a Q code 428 Thunderbird 7 liter V8 rated at 345 horsepower is just an added bonus. Uh, the original owner of this car had a wife and three children, so we needed a wagon to haul everybody around. But he had friends that owned sports cars and he had a taste for shifting his own gears. So that's what he wanted and that's what he got. So Ford built 48,115 Country Squire DFRS four-door station wagons during the 1967 model year. 1,149 had the Q-Code 428 engine. And of those 1,149, this is the only vehicle produced with a four-speed manual transmission. The rest of them were automatics. Uh, this car was also produced with bucket seats and a console as factory installs. So let's go ahead and do a walk around. This car was sold new in Miamisburg, Ohio, which is just outside Dayton. And it lived there until 2001 changing hands in 1977 to the second owner when it was 10 years old and then I was able to purchase the car in August of 2001. It was in non-running condition and uh, did a lot of work to get it running as reliably as it does. Engine rebuild, trans rebuild, cooling system, fuel, brakes, suspension, all that type of stuff. So, has uh, patina it obviously spent some of its time outdoors let's go ahead and have a look inside here you can see the uh, bucket seat and console interior which is not regular production option for country squire but is how this car was specified and was built uh, it's well equipped it has uh, air conditioning power windows am fm radio rear seat speaker tinted windshield uh, power steering, power drum brakes. Lots of room in the back. Technically two up front, three in the back seat. And then all the way back here is where the kids can sit. Right here. And of course this is Ford's Magic Door Gate, which debuted in 1966. Opens like that for people to get in and out. And opens like this to load cargo. This side, you see the light in the back of the console work. There's the interior from this side. Okay, let's have a look at the engine. Q code 428 4 rail, 345 horsepower. Car has air conditioning, as I said, power steering, power drum brakes. And this car will sit here and idle all day long. It's a great running car. Taking it on many road trips, going to Carlisle three or four times in the car. Data plate. The first line is the serial number 7U74Q143183. Body code 71A, which is a Country Squire DFRS. Four door station wagon, color code Z, Sauter and Gold. Trim 6U, Pastel Parchment, all vinyl. Date code 14B, scheduled to be built on February 14, 1967, which is Valentine's Day. ESO 270073. 27 tells you that the car was ordered through the Cincinnati, Ohio. Ordering District 0073 is a special order number. Actual code of 6 is a 2.80 to 1 non-locking differential with a 9 and 3 8 inch diameter ring gear. And transcode 5 is the 4 speed. So, there she is in all of her glory. Really a fantastic car. Uh, definitely a one-off, unique 
people cannot believe when they see this car that it was actually built as a four-speed. Just, uh, just a goofy, goofy combination, but fun to drive. A really, really neat car. So I hope that you have enjoyed this little video tour. Thank you. In the summer of 2016, Tom Cotter came to Detroit to film episode 13 of The Barn Find Hunter for Haggerty Insurance, and he featured 7U74Q143183 in that episode. He liked the car so much that in October 2016, he and I came to an agreement and I sold the car to Tom for $40,000. Later that month, I made the 600-mile trip from Detroit to Tom's home in North Carolina to deliver 7U74Q143183 to its new owner. It was a great one-day trip, my last hurrah with the car, and she didn't miss a beat. Tom used the car for more than three years, driving around the U.S. filming many more episodes of The Barn Find Hunter, but in May of 2020, he listed the car for sale on the Bring a Trailer website. 7U74Q143183 sold that month for $47,750 and went to a new owner, the car's fifth, who lives in New Jersey. Here's hoping that this special car will be around for many more years to come. And that, my friends, is the story of 7U74Q143183. Thank you for watching video number 12. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, and subscribe. There are lots more videos in the pipeline, so subscribe and be notified as each new video is released. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at adrian.clements at me.com. Yours in old FOMOCO iron, Adrian.